This week on Game On, the Vikings are back home, ready to get their first win of the season. We catch up with one of the youngest in purple. He's blocking for number 28, Zach Line in the house. Fans loved him as a player. Now Bobby Jackson's back to help build the Wolves into winners. The former gopher and NBA great joins us. Fresh from the studio, we welcome back the new king of the afternoon FM. Ryder rolls in, touching them all. And it's one of the most anticipated movies of the fall. We've got the inside scoop on Rush. So fasten your seatbelts. We're packed, ready to go. It's time to get your game on. Now, from the local Irish pub in downtown Minneapolis, it's Game On with Rod Simons. And it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Game On TV with your home or tailgating. It's the last dome opener of the Metrodome because they're moving, as we know, to TCF Bank. Cleveland Browns in town today. We're hoping for a big win, and after two losses, I think that's the secret elixir for this football team. We got a packed show for you. 28 minutes and 30 seconds of football, some baseball. We're going to be talking a little bit of radio, and the chef brings up the caboose with some great food. So let's get after it, as we always do. We start game on by the numbers. And when we look at the numbers, we find that the Vikings are going to be winging over the pond for the Steelers in London. The Twins are down to their final homestand of the 13th season. Wild continue their preseason games. And the Wolves open camp next week in Mankato. And when the Vikings take on the Browns today, it's all hands on deck. From the oldest veteran to the youngest rookie. And we have one of those young guns with us today. His name, Zach Line. He is a fullback out of SMU, we caught up with him at the local sister pub, Kieran's, on the other side of downtown Minneapolis, just the other day. Down the sideline, it's Zach Line. Zach Line to the 20, 10, breaking five. tech, touchdown! It is game day. This is Minnesota Viking fullback Zach Line. Great to have you in the house. How Great are you? Here. Great to be here. From SMU, rookie on the football team, so you're kind of getting your feet wet still with the National Football League and and all the comings and goings of being a professional football player. Yeah, it's been a long process. Um, you know, started pretty much right after the combine and, and the, actually the draft, I should say. Um, but it's been a it's been a long, fun ride, and um, finally getting some some action and uh, in some regular season games. You had some uh, very impressive preseason games that put you front and center on the Vikings' radar. Touchdown. Uh, you must have enjoyed the opportunity to get in there and just showcase yourself. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't ask for anything more than to be able to make make plays in the preseason because you only have such a big, you know, just a small window yeah. to make those plays. So um, when you get the ball, you got to make something happen. And uh, um, I was fortunate enough to be able to be able to do that. With the unfortunate Felton suspension, you go front and center. You get playing time. You get uh, in a position to help the team immediately as the season starts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was not unfortunate for Jerome, um, yeah. but uh, you know, obviously I, I have to take my opportunity and make the most of it. Um, yeah. and just take yeah. take what what games I have um, yeah. and make make plays, uh, block for Adrian, and you know try to win games. For What's us. that like? Blocking for I, you know what he's he's the MVP, and in, even more than that, he wants to win so bad. So um, you don't want to let a guy like that down. So you're doing everything you can do to to open up those holes for him. Do you keep an eye on SMU and see what they're doing on Saturdays? I went down to their first game. Uh, we had uh, that Thursday game. Yeah. So I went down uh, late August, Friday morning, yeah. and I made that game. My first Texas Tech wasn't very good, but Prescott scored his first touchdown. And then uh, this last game, they pulled it off against Montana State. Thank God. Nice, nice. Well, we're looking for big things from you. Thank you for being with us, and uh, continued good luck in your first season with the Minnesota Vikings. Thank you so much. Great to have you here. Zach Line in the house, only here on Game Line. It's the football season, but don't forget, after every Twins game, get the final call. We hit all Minnesota sports. Jason Nagel joins me after each and every Twins broadcast. The K-Twin final call with Game On Flair, only at 96.3 K-Twin. It's radio for us. We're just warming up. On deck, a former gopher great. But first, the K-Twin voice of the fan asking, are the Vikings going to win their dome opener? They have a chance because Cleveland is so bad. That is our only chance. You think the Vikings are bad this year? I just don't. I, I just don't think we have it. Uh, I, I've heard too many stories. I've heard too many stories.
They don't agree on much, these two, but they do love K-Twin, these two. Hey, Guardy, you know the twins are on our favorite radio station? Yeah, we're excited to be on FM. Will you start a radio? Make it out to uh, Keith and Kevin? Kevin and Keith. Keith and Kevin's fine. Kevin then. Get to, how about combine it? Kethevin? How would you spell that? K-E-I-T-H-E-I-K-E-T-E-V-E-N. Put me in cold. I'm ready to play. Is there anything that helps you see the court better or get so many, rack up so many assists? You know, you know who you're playing with. You know, if he can jump, if he likes going left, he likes going right. No looks in between to no one to throw an alley-oop or? No, it's just practice. Ball handling skills, passing. You just practice a lot, you know. Anything else? I can read minds. I won't tell anyone. I know. Time now to get back in the game. It's Game On TV. Game On is powered by the local. Good to have you with us on game day. You know who this guy is. Bobby Jackson's in the house. How, How are you? How you doing, man? Good, Good to have you here. Thank you for having and me. And welcome back to town, coaching with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Very exciting. Yeah, it's, it's a new adventure. You yeah. know, I was in Sacramento for uh, three years, and uh, once I stopped playing, and so um, it's, I'm just ready to learn. I asked you this before we came on, but I, I got to ask you with everybody watching now. Do people in Minnesota, when you come home, do they remember you more for your NBA career or your Gophers career or both? I think it's both. Nice. I think it's both. You know, being, a, being able to go to college here and then play with the Timberwolves and being able to go to the Final Four and win the Big Ten Championship, people also remember those great days. Um, so, you know, I think more the college days because I'm, I'm in Minnesota, yeah. but uh, some remember uh, my NBA career too. Well, if you talk to people around here, they'll tell you that there is a great deal of anticipation with Love and Rubio and Turioff and Pekovic, all these players now. And do the coaches feel that too? Of course. I think at the end of the day, you, you, you left out Corey Brewer, you left out Kevin Martin, oh, yeah. Chase Buttiger, oh, yeah. uh, so, um, and, and Dante Cunningham. The list goes on. Yes. And I think well, J.J. Barrera also. Yeah. So we got a, a nice group of young guys. I think the key for us is just staying healthy. Because that was the uh, trouble spot last year. Couldn't, yeah. keep, couldn't keep a lineup on the, on the floor. Yeah. If you probably look at it, we probably had the most, uh, most different lineups yep. in the NBA. And yeah. So when you, when you don't have a steady lineup and you're having guys in and out, it kind of affects the, the camaraderie, the chemistry. And so, you know, and then you're shorthanded. You know, yeah. when your best players go down, you kind of really shorthanded. And so guys stepped in really well and did a great job. The thing I like about what Coach Adelman is doing is not only is he getting a, a, a and Flip Saunders, couldn't really flip out on that, but a nice roster of players, but an all-star core of been there, done that veterans who are coaching and leading by example. I think you got to have it. I think, you know, you got to have a mixture of young guys. You also got to have a mixture of older, veteran oh, guys. Oh, yeah. Um, you just can't be young. You just can't be old. Yeah. Because if you one of the two, the young guy is going to get beat. If you're old, you, you're going to be too tired. And I'm so old that I remember Adelman when he had a full head of hair playing for the Portland Trailblazers. So that's, hey. hey don't tell him that. He, 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 might, him. he might be mad. Don't be a stranger, okay? Okay, thank Bobby you Bobby Jackson in the house. Get me this game on. Basketball's nearly back. Get up to speed with the Wolves on my weekly blog, Simon Says at Timberwolves.com. Full of inside information, we got you covered. It's Simon Says every Thursday at Timberwolves.com. Stay right there. We're previewing the upcoming Vikings trip to London with wide receiver Jerome Simpson. And up next, it's Fast, Furious, a movie you're going to want to see. Rush, right in your grill. First, though, the K-Twin voice of the fan asking, will the Vikings win their dome opener? Yes, because of the fans. And because of Adrian Peterson. You have much confidence in him? Uh, I give it about a 50-50.
I'm Christian Ponder with the Minnesota Vikings. I know how important it is to fuel up so that I can be successful on and off the field. As a partner with the Taste of the NFL and the NFL's Play 60 programs, I am proud to encourage all of my fellow NFL players to do our part to make sure kids get the nutrition they need to learn and play at their best. Go to tasteofthenfl.com and nfl.com to find out how you can help. Welcome to the team. Welcome back to Game On TV. Welcome back. It's Game On, powered by the local on game day Vikings in Cleveland a little later. You know, one of the movies you're going to want to see this fall is Action Pack. Great cinematography, great drama. It's called Rush. Welcome to the most dangerous circuit on the season. The electric tension here Chip at Fuji. has so far been the story of two men. Grueling and incredibly dramatic season comes down. And the racing grudge match of the decade. The James hunt Nicky Lauda rivalry is one of the greatest in all of sports. Their story is so remarkable that you can only do it if it was true, because people wouldn't quite believe it. Nicky Lauda and James Hunt side by side, an incredible battle between these two great drivers. The film tracks right up until the end of the 1976 season, where the rivalry comes to a dramatic head. That wind you can feel is me breathing down your neck. Next time I'll have you. One of the things they say about that period, the 70s in the Formula One world, is that's when sex was safe and driving was dangerous. I accept every time I get in my car, there's 20% chance I could die. Nicky approached it as rationally and as professionally as possible. Whereas James Hunt was a flamboyant ladies' man. I've been told you're a bad boy. He lived a rock and roll life, but had the talent to still put himself in the car and go like hell. Talk to me, James. Don't make a stranger of Don't me. Don't go to men who are willing to kill themselves driving in circles looking for normality. One of the fascinating aspects about that story is that fearlessness that these guys had. Like modern knights constantly facing death. I'm quicker than all of you. Fine. Then let's race. This will to win was driving both of these guys. And it all kind of came to a head in that 1976 season. They were willing to risk their lives to detain this elite status. They paid a price for it. They paid a price for it. But they defined themselves. I feel responsible for what happened. Trust me, watching you win those races while I was fighting for my life, you were equally responsible for getting me back in the car. It's about friendship, about fear, overcoming fear, about rivals who push each other beyond their limits. I'm world champion and on the verge to become world champion again. I can beat this guy. Trust me. This is a movie I wanted to see and a world that I wanted to occupy and share with audiences. Not only because of the on-track drama, the life-death drama, it's also just the really, truly entertaining nature. They're funny. And the combination, their relationship, went about the business of trying to be great was, I thought, emotional, cool, and certainly fascinating. And that's just the appetizer. Next week, I'm one on... It's a busy sports week. Let's check your update from the Purple Pride Planner. The Twins open their last homestand of the season against Detroit, the Vikings and Pittsburgh. The Vikings' next home game will be October 13th against Carolina and the Wolves in preseason October 7th. The Wild will open their season at the XL Energy Center October 3rd against the LA Kings, Gopher Football in Iowa, the United FC against San Antonio, and the Swarm will open their season first of the year against Philadelphia. North Dakota on the 28th, North Dakota State at South Dakota State, South Dakota at Western Illinois. The PGA and the President's Cup Champions Tour at the SAS Championships and NASCAR at Dover. 
the inside information, and you can catch up to us at GameOnTVMN.com. And that's your Purple Pride Planner. Improved and available for iPhones and Android, too. From shows to sponsor links, we bring the show to you 24-7. We also link you to our partner site, The Best Vikings Fan at purplepride.org. So load it now and get your game on. We're far from finished. We're going to get to your fantasy football with the guru. But next, the Minnesota Airwaves. Ryder is here. First, though, the K-Twin voice of the fan asking, are the Vikings going to win their dome opener? Of course we'll win the home opener in the, in the dome. So we own the Browns. We're taking them down. You're not in Vikings colors. Not in Vikings colors today. Yeah, doing a little Timberwolves work here today, too, because T-Wolves season is coming soon. Get your tickets. Join T-Wolves Army. <laughs> We'll never know if somehow, in some way, we can affect the outcome of a game. But when the clock's winding down and everything's on the line, we all believe It starts your morning with a forecast. Then watch as your energy use all day. It can change your temperature from anywhere in the world, prevent you from heating and cooling an empty house, and still give you a comfortable welcome home. The iComfort Wi-Fi from Lennox. The most advanced comfort control solution available anywhere is now available for your home. So call Liberty Comfort Systems and make your home a smart home today. Lennox, innovation never felt so good. Pick up the latest issue of Wheels of Thunder magazine. If it's on wheels, you'll find it in Wheels of Thunder. Full color photos of bikes, trikes, cars, trucks, and even sleds. High performance or right off the street. Mind blowing power, speed, and custom touches. It's all in Wheels of Thunder magazine. Plus, find out about the latest races, rallies, and custom products and services in your area. Check out Wheels of Thunder on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Wheels of Thunder. Time now to get back in the game. It's Game On TV. One Republican counting stars at 337. It's 96.3 K-Twin. Radio for us, Ryder, Lindsay, Ron Coomer, your K-Twin afternoon show, where tomorrow is Twins Ticket Tuesday. Game On is powered by the local. Great to have Ryder from K-Twin in the afternoons back in the house with us. All right, buddy. Oh, dude, I'm great. It's been a fun day, and I'm excited to be here and eat some good Irish food. Oh, yeah, and we have Vikings in Cleveland. We'll talk football in just a minute because it is game day. You've been here uh, just over six months. Everything's still going well? Tell us, fill us in. Oh, everything's going phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, of course, we wish that, you know, the Twins could be performing a little bit better this yes, year. Yes, we do. Um, you know, the ground floor of a brand new radio station for this community. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the fans have been there. They've stepped up. The Twins themselves have stepped up. We got to broadcast from the first baseline last week. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's I'm pretty sure, a first in the MLB. Nice. I love the combination of you and Coomer and Miss Lindsay in the house in the afternoons. You guys, does it look as fun as it sounds on the air? No, no, no. There's a lot of work that we put in to this show. Nice. <laughs> but you all get you all get along and have a good time. Oh, absolutely. How can you not? I mean, Ron Coomer is. Uh, He's, he's like jumper cables. Yes. And when you get in the room with him, uh, you can't not be elevated to the next yes. level of yes. gameplay. That's why he's an all-star. Yeah. yeah. When you uh, came home, you were recently in Denver. You an award-winning broadcaster. You, a lot of people might not know this, but you are a Minnesota kid. Yes. I actually went to uh, to college in Winona. Nice. My whole family is is from Winona, nice. and uh, and I have my, my my grandmother to thank for making me go. Nice. To Winona State. Who well, you put on the radio periodically as well. Oh yeah, yeah. That's Very Mama. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. But does that rekindle your relationship with the Minnesota Vikings? That love hate relationship that everybody in Minnesota has. Yes, it does. <laughs> because nice. I always flash back to. Uh, my college days at Winona, now I was coming from Chicago, okay, at the no. time, oh, that's, yeah. where, that's where I was reared in Chicago as a Bears fan, and I'll always remember uh, in, in the late 80s, there was mm. a big championship game where all of the people in my dorm room 
uh, were betting against me, and of course the Vikings won that year. And when I lost the bet, I, I had to ingest the brim of my hat. Yeah. Eat it. Chunk by disgusting little chunk. Did you really do that? I really did. Oh my God. And so, yes, so it definitely brings up the love-hate thing. Yes. It does. So the Vikings lose in Chicago. I was reading your post. We won't go back there. But you expect a Vikings win against Cleveland. Uh, absolutely, I do. And while I'm hoping that there's a lot of changes that get made uh, in this game, especially to the offense, I, I truly hope that, that that our quarterback gets the chance to call some audibles on the field. Nice. You know what I mean? Like when when you walk out and you see eight guys lined up in the box, you got to be able to throw that quick out. I agree. You have to be able to. Yeah, I think that there's going to be a lot of re-energizing of this football team in the dome with their fans and, and the faithful. Keep up the good work. We love seeing you. We love. Seeing you here, we love hearing you on the radio. Great to have you in town. As always, a pleasure, Rod Simons. Thank you. We love you, Ryder. We're getting our game on. 96-3, Ryder, Lindsay, and Coomer. Every afternoon from 3 to 7. Very nice. On game on. Be a part of Minnesota's best radio station at ktwin.com. You can load the station's new app for Apple or Android, and both will deliver the lowdown on community, sports, and music, and both have the 411 on station personalities. On site or on the app, it's free. It's 96.3 K-Twin. Still more before we're wrapped. We get a game on update, checking in on the London game against the Steelers, and also a fantasy football check with the Guru. Next on Game On. And he's loose! TC hat. M hat. TC hat. M hat. TC hat. TC hat. M Being creative is who we are. At Wallingburg and Deeply, families are our passion. We help create new families. This combination of experience, passion, and creativity allows us to fully represent individuals in family court crises. Wallingburg and Deeply believes in families. We will listen, counsel, and advocate for you. Wallingburg and Deeply, the premier family law firm of Minnesota. It's the 60 Second Chef. Chef Chris in the house, always good to be with you, my friend. Love being here. Let's get after it. I don't recognize this. What is this? Tuna tatar. Oh. So fresh cut ahi tuna, tossed in a quick cured in a ponzu sauce, on a fried wonton, avocado. Oh. Very popular. Very popular. And wasabi pickled carrots and uh, a chili oil to finish it. Oh, that looks delicious. You lost me at wasabi, though. Is it hot? Put wasabi. Oh, uh, no, not too much. Okay. The Minnesota. Very nice. You know, this a little bit of This looks delicious and fresh. So, fresh Scottish salmon, stuffed with lump crab beans, oh, dill, and then the lemon slices, and then we bake that in the brick oven. Served over a citrus vinaigrette with a citrus vinaigrette cucumber salad. Wow, that looks delicious. You have saved <laughs> Midwest for last. Piece de resistance? Yes. Okay, knife and fork hot roast. So, slow brace pot roast with roasted carrots, cipollini onions, and mushrooms in a red wine au jus with mashed potatoes. I would imagine popular every month out of the year. Yes, we always, lots of pot roast. We also make a sandwich out of this, the same pot roast for the pot roast sandwich with gorgonzola cheese, sauteed onions on a ciabatta roll. Excellent, but really the pot roast, you can eat it with a spoon. How long have you been a chef? I'm going to date myself, but 27 years. Very nice. And I know that you served in the military and the Navy. Thank you for your service. Thank you. It's game day. The Vikings in Cleveland. Do you have a prediction? Vikings. That a boy. And thank you for the wonderful food. We love being with you. Thank you, Rod. Chef Chris, only here in the 62nd show. It wouldn't be Sunday without the guru. Good to have you back in the house. Let's get right after it. Did I read this correctly? Now, I know Seattle's a pretty good football team, yes, but 19-point favorite on the first line over Jacksonville? Yeah, it's it's even gone up, I believe. I think it's up to 20 points, which really leads the, the way for the ground game in Seattle. Um, Marshawn Lynch coming off of a big, um, big game for him, three touchdowns. Um, I'm actually predicting that Robert Turbin who has averaged five plus yards of carry so far this year is going to get in the mix and probably score a touchdown. So he's not a bad option at a flex. Okay, another fantasy big one. 
Houston and Baltimore. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about in that game. Um, you know, Andre Johnson coming off the concussion. Yeah. Um, and then you also look at who's going to have to pick up the slack there, and that's the tight ends. Right. Uh, Owen Daniels has scored three times already. Yeah. Uh, Garrett Graham's got two. So that's five tight end touchdowns. If you have them in the Super League like you do, then uh, that's a good thing. Nice. Uh, but then we also look at DeAndre Hopkins, their stud rookie receiver. Um, went out and grabbed the game winner last week, so nice. uh, look for more of the same. Number 28 is back in the Dome. Look for a big game. Well, if you remember the last uh, time they were at home was, yeah. uh, you know, when he fell nine yards short, 199 yards against Green Bay. Uh, the five games prior to that, he's averaging 160 yards. He scored seven touchdowns in those five games. Um, so I'm looking for an above average performance. I think he's going to touch 200 today. I think the Vikings are just going to go crazy after two losses, which they thought should have been wins. Right. Could be a crazy day in the dome. And you're predicting? I think it's going to be a, a get well game. Um, and yeah. on the defensive side of the ball, I think we're going to be able to bring a lot of pressure, which we haven't really seen. Um, so our defense uh, is going to be strong. And AP's a stud. Uh, I like the way that Ponder's been connecting with Jennings. Uh, yeah. So it'll be good to watch. So you're calling a win? Absolutely. Only here. It's the Guru and the Fantasy Update on Game Up. Tis the color of the season, purple, and no one catches the Vikings like Game On picture partner Logan Craig Photography. This week, Viking fans are tailgating up a storm. Their team is home. It's the dome opener against the Cleveland Browns. Time for the purple to get a W. The great players back on the field, ready to roll inside the dome from number 28 to 84 and everyone in between. It's time to get their game on. And for unforgettable pictures and one of a kind memories, check these guys out. They're our partners, Logan Craig Photography. Time again for your game on update. It's here, the Vikings' long-awaited home game in London right around the corner. A week from Sunday, the Vikings host the Pittsburgh Steelers. Even players tell us they're excited. Definitely looking forward to London. It's my first time over there. It's going to be good just to see that uh, that national, that, that, that scene. And, yeah. Uh, Wembley Stadium, do you have your passport already? Oh, London? yeah. It's already ready. It turned in and um, packed up, and I'm going to be ready to go. Go get them, 81. And that's your Game on Update. Busy show it's been. Thank you for letting us be a part of your weekend. And that's it for us. Get all our updates and guest information at GameOnTVMN.com. Next week, we'll talk about London because the Vikings will be playing the Steelers across the pond. And we'll be talking to Chris Calabello of your Minnesota Twins. We leave you with shots from tailgating. Go Vikings, Skull Vikings. And see you next week. Keep your game on.